There's a group on the left that you need to know about. It's called Arabella Advisors. And I think that they may be, in fact, the most powerful group in politics. And it's one that very few people have even heard of. But trust me when I say that the impact that they are having is seismic. Let me tell you what you need to know about Arabella Advisors. They are a for-profit consultancy. And that plays an integral role in left-wing causes. But guess what? Who's actually funding it? Billionaire George Soros. It turns out that Arabella has a series of groups that all sound very innocent. One's called the Student Experience Research Network. I mean, doesn't that sound nice? What could be wrong with a group like that? But it exists, according to its documents, to advance the research relationships and capacity necessary to build an educational system in which every student experiences respect as a valued person and thinker. I mean, again, you read both of those things, the name and the mission statement, and it sounds like there's nothing to see here. This is the rub, though. The work they do, though, is far from sweet and innocent. Once we look at what they actually do, I mean, these are folks that are promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI, including things like inclusive mathematics environments. What the heck is that? There's a brand new report that came out that claimed that they scored a big victory, this Arabella Advisors, for forcing the University of California system to stop using the SATs in admissions processes, right? This is their big claim to victory. Why? Because they're clearly trying to change the system. But the whole web of Soros-funded money gets much, much darker because it's not just that Arabella funds this student research experience network and hundreds of other left-wing activist groups. The Washington Free Beacon found that Arabella has established five tax-exempt nonprofit groups that pay Arabella a hefty fee. Now, ostensibly, this is for back office work, administrative kind of things, right? Clerical things. And in turn, they operate a vast array of left-wing advocacy groups, including the Student Experience Research Network. The Free Beacon reports that, in fact, the Student Experience Research Network's ostensible employees don't even know they work there. They are employees of an Arabella offshoot called the New Venture Fund. The average citizen would have no idea who's pulling the strings, according to the reporting of the Washington Free Beacon. It goes to lengths in this report to make it clear that Arabella goes to great, great lengths to disguise the control and the creation and the illusion that they have over all of these grassroots political activist networks that they control. This is hardly the sort of relationship that Arabella and two of its offshoots, the New Venture Fund and the 1630 Fund, described to the IRS when they were seeking tax-exempt status. I mean, even the IRS caught on to this and flagged the relationship when this new venture fund, one of the holding companies for Arabella, first applied for tax-exempt status in 2006. The IRS flagged conflicts of interest with Arabella. According to the Free Beacon's reporting, Arabella founder and president and the new venture fund proposed paying Arabella a 5% overhead fee to handle administrative tax. Arabella's current ownership is completely unclear. It is owned by a Delaware business called Arabella Acquisition LLC, which doesn't disclose its ownership. The IRS even had concerns that this new venture fund didn't seek competing bids for the contract and that the head of the organization would reap what they considered illegal profits from their own charity. Well, guess what? the IRS finally relented and gave them their tax-exempt status. Now, I know all of this sounds like a bunch of gobbledygook, and I get it, but that's the point. The left wants to cover up what they're doing because what they're doing is having a massive influence in our society and our country. They are everywhere, and we just can't see it, and that's the way that they want it. You see, it's just not about the Student Experience Research Network. It's also organizations controlled by Arabella called Stop Deficit Squawks, Americans for Tax Fairness, the Institute for Responsive Government, Defend American Democracy, the Scholarly Publishing and Academic Research Coalition, and on and on and on. All of those groups sound so great, but the Free Beacon reported that Arabella's five funds serve as fiscal sponsors 
of the network's pop-up groups, organizations that exist for a brief period and then disband, often rallying support for opposition to a particular political objective. Fiscal sponsorship is a unique arrangement that allows the initiatives to operate as nonprofit entities without disclosing their board members and obfuscates the source of their revenue, expenses, or to whom they distribute grants. From protest movements to lobbying, if there's a new liberal pet cause, there is usually some Arabella group to advocate on his behalf. Some of Arabella's more prominent pop-up groups, such as Demand Justice, end up breaking away from the network and establishing themselves as independent nonprofits. Others, such as Kansas for a Secure Elections, SoCal Health Co Coalition, and Justice March, exist for a brief period and then disband. That's all according to the Free Beacon. But it goes on, and this is key. It says the benefits of Arabella's centralized control over the network are made clear to new venture fund employees. With Arabella in control, it can coordinate, collaborate initiatives between donors, and gain access to expert philanthropic strategy, development, execution, evaluation, and support service. What this all means in practice is that Arabella can shuffle around big money between its funds, and it does. The network's five funds passed a combined $189 million between themselves in the two years according to their tax returns. Arabella's fund hauled in a combined $3.3 billion in 2020 and 2021. Its primary political arm, the 1630 Fund, doled out $61 million to Democratic super PACs during the 2020 election, second only to Majority Forward, a dark money group associated with Senate Democrats. The 1630 Fund spent so much money on politics in 2020 that the Federal Election Commission's general counsel urged the commission in June 2022 to find reason to believe the fund violated federal law by failing to register as a political committee. The FEC, however, went against its attorney's recommendation and closed the case in September. Not a shock there. But you see what I'm talking about. Billions in influencing policy and elections. This is what the left is up to. If we ever want to compete, and more importantly, if we ever want to win, we need to first know what we're up against and second, how to start to compete with them. Look, too many folks on the right love funding TV ads. And yes, they play an important role, but the left is literally playing chess while the right is barely playing checkers. Understanding this system, as confusing as it may be, is critical. You wonder why all this woke crap happens, why it passes, why penalties for crimes that we should all agree on, theft, vandalism, etc., are going away. This is it. This is why they're winning the pronoun war. And more important, why progressive nut jobs from city council to local prosecutors and DAs to the U.S. Senate are winning elections. It is because of this network. We must do a better job of understanding what we're up against and how to win. Well, if you enjoyed this video, click the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell to make sure that you never miss another video.